What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So we're going to continue our trend on doing some how-tos and guides as that's what was requested by our community. And today's will be a little bit of a basic tutorial but we thought we'd do it nonetheless. For a while now we've been building our retro Intel system. This has an Intel motherboard with a first generation i7 processor, 8 gigs of RAM and we've also got a bit of a retro graphics card to go in it too. Now this has been on the test bench and it all works perfectly fine. But today we want to actually give it a bit more of a home and put it in a case and give it a bit of a power supply. So what we're going to be showing you is how to actually fit a system into a case and do some basic cable management. Now for most of you this will be pretty basic but if you hang around you might see some tips and tricks and different ways that we do it and potentially learn something. Okay, so the first thing that we'll need is obviously the case. Now we've opted for a Cooler Master Micro ATX case. This one in particular is the MB320L. It's a pretty decent case, although we did get it refurbished, so it was missing a few little bits and we'll find them as we go along. Obviously when choosing a case, you want something of quality that's actually gonna expand for later. And this one's gonna give us plenty of that for this system. Being a Micro ATX case, they're pretty small, so you can pretty much store them anywhere once they're complete. First thing that we've done is obviously remove the glass panel and then we need to remove the back panel. Most modern cases, they'll actually just use thumb screws so they're pretty easy to do just like that. The next step is actually to weigh up the motherboard against the back plates. Now these back plates often come with little standoffs which the motherboard sits on to lift it away from the back of the panel and then obviously things won't touch the back and you won't get any shorts or anything. Now, most cases are actually configured straight away for the motherboards that they will fit, but sometimes they're a little bit different because you can get shorter motherboards and they don't put as many standoffs in, but they do tend to give you some spares just like this, so you'll have to locate them in. The best way of doing that is just to just weigh up the motherboard against the back plate, see where there's any missing, and then add them in. And you may need to use actually a little socket just to give them a bit of a tightening, but that's about it really. Once you've done that, obviously you'll need to remember to fit your back plate. Now the back plate goes in the back of the system from the inside like this and it will simply allow all the ports and IOs on the back to line up and look nice without any big gaps. Now they simply just push in from the inside just like that. Now if there's any actual confusion around which way the back plate goes, often the sound ports which can be found on the motherboard at the bottom here will actually go to the bottom of the case here. So that's pretty much lined up there. Now all we need to do is drop the motherboard in, line it up and add some screws. Now to drop the motherboard in, obviously we just need to lower it in nice and gently because we don't want to damage it and line it up with all those little standoffs that we've got and the back plate and then slide it to the back and mount it just here. Now this board, luckily one of the center uh, standoffs has actually got a little lip on it and it will slot into the hole in the motherboard so you actually know it's in the right place. All we need to do now is actually locate the screws into the different holes and mount the board down. We don't want too much pressure but we need it enough to be able to hold the motherboard in uh, so it doesn't move around when it's in there. Now that we've got all the screws actually in the motherboard it's always worth remembering to make sure you put as many in as you can. Don't leave any corners um, loose because the motherboard could hang from that or it could get damaged in some kind of transit or it could actually touch the back plate at some point or touch something else and you could get a short out in your system. So make sure you put all those screws in. Now, unfortunately for us, this motherboard is a bit of a retro board. It's quite old, so we don't have anything such as like an M.2 slot to be able to put a hard drive on. So we're gonna have to install a SATA drive. Now at the moment, because this is a retro system, we've got it installed with a hard drive. So we'll need to insert that into the back. Now, one of the problems with this uh, case, because it was refurbished, it didn't actually come with any rubber plungers to be able to put a small 2.5 inch SATA drive in. So fortunately, we've got a big hard drive to be able to stick in it and it does come with those kind of rails, but later on we're gonna to have to do something different. And we will do that because we're gonna take this system through an upgrade, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that. For the hard drive, it's pretty simple. We have a bay at the bottom here, which the hard drive will slide into, and they do provide you with these little racks that just simply push onto the side. And then you can locate them into the uh, slide bay and just push it back and it should just click in at the end just like that and then the hard drive is installed. 
Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, this wasn't just about installing a motherboard. We're also going to install a power supply and do some basic cable management and show you a few tips and tricks that we use, although there are many different ways of doing it. Now, to do that, we're going to stick with the Cooler Master theme and we're going to have a look at a couple of different power supplies that we've got available. Now, ideally, if you want very clean cable management, obviously you want something like this. This is a fully modular system, which means we can decide which cables we use and the others can be spare for later on. But we're not going to make things easy for ourselves. We're actually not going to install this one. We're going to install this instead. Now, this is a very similar power supply, although it is a white rating and not a gold rating like the one that we just saw. But it is a fully wired system, so we're going to have to actually do some work to manage the cables in. They do generally come with the basics that you need, although the fully modular ones do come with extras. But this is more than enough than we need for this machine. Now, as you can see, this power supply does have all the cables and it's a big, long mess stuck straight into the power supply and we can't actually take them out, but that's fine. We're going to do a bit of cable management around that. Now, it's pretty easy to fit this. All we need to do is turn the case round. And the power supply will fit straight into the bottom here with the fan facing down. Now, in most cases, do actually have a basement, which is good for us because that's really going to help with our cable management. If you don't have a basement, you've got a lot more work to do, but it's not impossible. You can do it, but you will see more cables than you would without. Now, in some cases, you also have a bit of venting in the top and you can actually install the power supplies the other way around. Now, a lot of people do that when they've got RGB fans inside the power supply, but I don't generally buy them and I actually prefer to have the power supplies facing down anyway. So that is perfect for us. Now, power supplies will only go in pretty much one way and we're going to be installing in just like that. So all you want to do is slide the power supply down and line it up with the back. Now, on the back here, we can see, and this is where we're already falling into trouble because we can't fit the cables or anywhere. The screws will actually line up to the back plate and we want to insert them now. Now, most power supplies will actually come with four little screws for mounting it in. But if you've picked up a second hand one and you don't have those screws, generally the cases come with them too. They'll come in the little bags of accessories so you can get away with using them anyway. But we'll just put these in and we'll get our power supply sorted. Now that our power supply is actually mounted in properly, we have the big task of doing a bit of cable management and routing those cables to where they need to go. And to do this, you're going to need lots of these cable ties. Now, I tend to buy these in bulk because I build a lot of systems, but the cases generally do tend to come with a few. I don't find that they're enough anyway because you get four or five, whereas I will probably use like 20 because I will continue to mount things and then remove it and then move them, mount them again, that kind of thing. But you can buy them in bulk and they're very cheap, so it's worth getting if particularly you're going to be upgrading your system in future because you're going to want to be taking these cables in and out. But when working with a fully wired power supply, one of the things that I like to do is first sort out which cables I need and which ones I don't. For this build, obviously, we will need the 24 pin, which is this one. So we're going to put that to the side. Next, we will need a CPU power cable, which is that one. We will also need a PCI Express cable because we are going to be installing a graphics card into this later on. And because we're running a 3.5 inch hard drive, we will need a SATA power cable as well. So I think they're pretty much all the same on this. Generally, what I will do is I will take the shortest one with the least um, plugs on top of it but obviously here we've got some molex ones we've got some sata ones and i purely want just a sata one and because they're all the same size i'll just take one of them out and we'll put it over there too now with the rest i generally fold them up as much as i can sometimes i put a cable tie around it sometimes i don't and i will tuck it into the system in the back there now that actually gets rid of the cable straight away and I don't have to worry about trying to route them anywhere or trying to mount them. I can just simply tuck them in there and use them another day if I need them. Now, if we flip the case round, 
what we want to do now is we want to have a look at where our cables are actually going to go. So we need a 24 pin here so we can actually bring it through this top channel. We'll need the CPU at the top there so we can bring it through there. And the PCI Express can either come through the front here or come through the bottom here, depending where the plug is on our graphics card. I don't know yet because I'm not sure what we're going to install in it. So I'm not actually going to pull that cable through yet. I'll tuck it through with those other um, SATA cables for now and we'll hide it away till another time. Now to do the next bit, what we'll do is we'll flip it on its side and we'll show you from that direction. As we said before, we've got a CPU cable, which we want to route through here. And we'll just put that through now. We want our 24 pin motherboard cable to route through here. And our SATA one, we don't really want to do much with it at the moment. So we'll actually just tuck that underneath the hard drive because all it's going to do is actually just flip round and plug it in. And it appears that it's the wrong way around. So we'll hide that in there and plug it straight into the drive. So we don't have to worry about anything now. I generally do this because I like to fit the big cables first, get them into the rough areas of where I want them. And then any of the smaller cables from the IO, I like to fit afterwards because then I can pin them to the big cables or pin them out of the way. But we'll get them big ones plugged in first and we'll see where we are. Now that we've got the big plugs in and pretty much secure, we're going to flip the machine over and have a look at the best route that we can take these cables so they're nice and clean. Now it's always a good idea if your cables are split up like this to actually run a lot of cable ties down it just to bring it all together and we'll do that now. So we just wanna flip a couple of these cable ties around just to keep things nice and tidy and we'll just keep going around just like this. Now when routing your cables, there's also another trick that we use and it's generally where people make a bit of a mistake. Now that is where they try to take the cables the shortest distance possible, thinking that they're actually going to have a tidier job. Now we don't do that because what happens is you tend to get it into a bundle somewhere and it looks more of a mess than it did before. So what I generally do is I will try to maneuver the cables into an area, even if it's the longest route, because then you'll have the smallest surface area covered. What you also wanna do is make sure that you keep lifting the machine, just to check, are my cables looking pretty smart? Now, as you can see, if I actually route it the long way here, this cable's gonna be all the way up there, when it would look much smarter from the big front if it was actually down. So we're gonna to have to take it down, which means we're gonna to have to hide a bit of the cable later. Now, fortunately, we can actually tuck this in on top of the hard drive bay. So we could probably get away with just pinning it just about there. Now to pin it, obviously, we're gonna use another cable tie. And lots of cases actually do come with lots of pin areas. You basically get these little plugs that you can actually pin everything to. And we'll simply just pin it down just like that. And if it is a mess on the front, we'll have to obviously undo that and do it again, but it's actually looking pretty good where it is there. The top one, I generally try to take across the power supply and then up the side. And you may need to get a little bit tricky here with your uh, cable ties because very often these plugs are really close to the frame and you have to actually scoop them round and bring them back out just like that. But you can pretty much do that before you actually put the cable in just like this. Then we're going to feed the cable into it, bring it down tight. Just like that. Now obviously while we're doing this, we wanna make sure that we're never having cables any higher than the bottom of the frame. And that's because our back won't fit on if they're actually bundled up anywhere or if they're a bit of a mess. Now, with the front IO cables, you always have to double check whether they're actually long enough. Now I know on this motherboard, we have our IO at the front, so we could either come through here or here. I believe it's actually, it's probably about here on the motherboard. So we might bring that through the front there. With the others, we have a HD audio. Now that is right at the back of the motherboard and they've actually given you a really short cable on this one, which is a bit annoying, but we're gonna have to somehow figure out how to get it across there 
and through there. Then we have our USB. Now, on a normal system, the motherboard will actually come with USB 3, just like this case does. It doesn't come with USB 2. And you will have one of these plugs that will go straight through and onto the motherboard wherever it is. But unfortunately, on a retro motherboard, you don't have that luxury. This one didn't come with USB 3. So we have USB 2 headers that we'll need to convert pretty much on the motherboard, but we can do that with an adapter cable. Now this is an adapter cable that converts your USB 3 to USB 2, and we can actually fit that on the motherboard and feed it straight through the back, which means this can actually connect in the back anyway, and we don't have this great big plug, which are always a pain in the butt anyway, on the other side. So we'll just add that in now, and we'll feed it through wherever the USBs are. Now, one thing to remember when you're doing this is always check your motherboard manual. If you didn't get a manual with your motherboard, you'll need to go online and actually download one. They generally, all brands will have a manual on their websites in a PDF format, and they'll give you all the information that you would normally get from the book. Most likely actually more up to date than the book was anyway, in case there was any changes. You wanna do this because you don't wanna be plugging these cables into the wrong places. But as part of this video, we're gonna assume that you're gonna be doing that anyway. This is literally just how to cable manage when you know how to do that stuff. Now that we've got the USB 3 through, we're literally going to just plug in that cable into the adapter just like that and find a place to tuck it somewhere nice so that it looks all nice and cable managed. Now we could take this through the top and I'm gonna pull, I'm actually going to feed it straight over the top of the 24 pin ATX and have it come down like that. Now the only one that's actually super annoying in this case is this HD audio. I don't know why they've not made it any longer because generally cases will have enough length to go down the bottom, across and in, because the HD audio ports on motherboards are generally in the same place. So that's a little bit annoying, but we're gonna find a way to do it anyway. We may just take it down there. What we're looking for though is streamlines across everything because that's what actually gives us that really super clean cable managed look. Now that we've got all the cables actually plugged onto the motherboard, all we need to do now is look to how we can best route them. I'm thinking that these cables should probably follow themselves down and we can pin them down this side and then this cable we will actually mount to here and we will run it down the side of the 24 pin just so it's actually much more tidier and that's the beauty of adding all the large cables in first because you give it all the others the small ones something to pin to now obviously we're missing the hard drive cable because we'll need to install that and we have one here this is just a standard SATA cable it has a 90 degree in the one side and it has a flat in the other side. And we'll just generally plug this in to the front, just like that. And then we'll feed it through the closest hole that we can, looping it nice and clean. And then swinging it back round to follow all the other cables. We'll tuck it straight into there, underneath the hard drive, and we'll plug it in just like that. Now you can get different types of SATA cables. You can get ones with 90 degrees or not, and it's best to choose which one you want for your system, in particular on how clean it's gonna look. Now most motherboards do come with multiple cables with multiple angles, so just select the one that you want to use. And there we have it. We have a very clean front where there's no cables actually dangling anywhere, and we've got plenty of space for air to flow through the system. Plus as well, it's much easier to clean because you don't have to actually sit there dusting cables anymore. They're all in the back and they're all pretty tidy. And if we have a look at the back, we can see that things are just as tidy there as well. And that will really help us going forward when doing upgrades because we will want to plug things in and out, as well as being able to trace wires when we forget where we've actually put them years down the line. Now we hope you've learned something as part of this video and it would be really good if you could drop your comments in below. Let us know if there's any different way of doing what we've done so that we can learn just as much as you. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we're gonna be doing lots of upgrades on this system going forward, including case fans, new cooling solutions, lots of different things, and you won't wanna miss that. Drop us a like on this video if you like the content and we'll catch you in the next one.